I haven't seen any of his German films. And I think eventually, at a certain point in his life, he didn't want to talk about his German films. He felt that his Hollywood films were his major work. Um, you know, I lived through the 50s, and it seems um, now that those films, which were like a fantasy in a way, now seem very realistic in retrospect. So that's an interesting trick of art, you know, that it was very controlled and very art-directed and very precise, but somehow he did manage to capture some essence of the 50s uh, that really resonates with me. It somehow seems very realistic in a strange way. Well, I think uh, many of my films, not all of them, but many of them are genre films, and he was uh, very interested in creating his own genre of the Hollywood melodrama, and, uh, and in each case, we both obeyed the conventions of the genre, but uh, managed at the same time to subvert the conventions at the same time, which is something you have to do if you are trying, if you're going to make a film that is not very predictable and very boring. So you take strength from the, con the conventions, uh, because the audience knows what to expect to a certain extent, and they're emotionally ready, but then, uh, but then you can't be boring, and you have to surprise them. Well, I think what's happening in Russia is very interesting. There's an emergence of a new kind of, uh, for them, a very raw, primitive form of capitalism. It's as though they're trying to in reinvent capitalism in a Russian form. Uh, and suddenly it's a, we see it's a throwback to Russia from before the Soviet Union. You know, there's a thousand years of Russian culture before this communism. And I think that is now re-emerging in a different way. And of course, in a drama, the criminal aspects of that, the, the criminal kind of capitalism, which they're very close together, we see, um, is, is fascinating, a fascinating subject. And, and uh, Eastern Europe, um, the compression of all these different cultures within London, very fascinating. Uh, the screenwriter Steve Knight um, wrote a, a movie called Dirty Pretty Things for Stephen Frears, also talking about, in that case, African and Turkish uh, immigrants uh, living in London. Very interesting idea of multiculturalism, just like in my hometown of Toronto, that is to say, unlike America where you, you give up your national heritage to become an American, in, in Toronto and in London, no, you keep your national heritage, you keep your religion, your food, your, your language, and still somehow interact with the umbrella society. It's an interesting, it, it makes for a very rich uh, uh, ground for making a film. Well, uh, an artist is always looking to answer some basic questions about life, about the human condition. Uh, why? What is life like? Why is it the way it is? What does my life mean? You know, these are, in a way, in my movies, I'm asking myself these questions over and over again, and sometimes I'm finding different answers. Um, I don't think that's so unusual myself. I think most artists, on some level, are always doing the same thing. Well, uh, the beginning of a project can be anything. It can be a newspaper article, as it was for Dead Ringers. It can be a dream, as it was for Shivers. Uh, of course, it can be a novel, uh, The Dead Zone or Crash. Uh, it can be a life, in a way, like Naked Lunch, a combination. And, and it can be, uh, could be a play, like M. Butterfly. It, a, a movie can come from anywhere and then build like a crystal, you know, gradually grows larger and larger. So I never... Um, I'm, I'm never surprised that at, at the many ways a, a movie can develop, you know. Um, each film is its own strange story of financing, you know, and uh, the fact that you had the success one time does not necessarily guarantee that you will find easy financing the next time. It does depend on the project, you know. I mean, after I did The Fly, which was a big success, I still couldn't get Dead Ringers financed because people would say, no, but we want you to do The Fly again or another horror film 
we don't understand this story about two gynecologists, you say? So people do read the script, and therefore it's not true that if you have one big success you can do anything you want. People think that. It's not true. Um, so each, each, uh, each movie has a long, complicated, really very boring story about how it got made, you know, and, and there's no guarantees, as I say, from one to the other. Um, since since uh, History of Violence and now Eastern Promises has seemed to be a, a very big critical success, um, uh, it means that people will answer my phone calls who might not have answered them before, but that might only last for a week. <laughs>